Hi, um, I'm Vinny. I'm um, engineer at uh, Digital Ocean, and here I'm with uh, Marcelo, VP of Engineering at Unbabel. Good morning. How's it going? Hi, very well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming by. Uh, we're here in Lisbon with this beautiful city, and um, yeah. So, tell me a little bit about Unbabel and um, your journey at, at the company. Cool. So, at Unbabel, we're building the world's understanding layer. Uh, we're all about uh, providing companies with capabilities to uh, interact with their customers in whatever language. Mm -hmm. We provide this combination between AI and humans, mm -hmm. um, providing languages, uh, translation um, for customer support, chat, mm -hmm. subtitling, uh, you name it, unlocking all these sort of potentials to companies. Mm -hmm. um, so I joined the company uh, uh, January this year, 2017. Mm -hmm. um, I had worked before with uh, Unbevel because we were, I was on a VC that back mm -hmm. in Unbevel before and I've been with the company ever since. So we've 11 uh, amazing months so far. Nice, nice. Um, so um, how big is Unbevel now and how are you joined the company? Cool. So I can tell you that when I joined, I think we were roughly 11 engineers, okay. uh, measuring it in engineering terms. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, and now we're uh, roughly 30. Uh, the whole company grew. We're now um, somewhere between 70 and 80 people. Mm -hmm. And we're continuously growing up. Nice. And you're based, based here in Lisbon? Yes. Uh, so we're based in, uh, in Lisbon. Our uh, headquarters. Mm -hmm. We have an office in London, uh, in the US as well. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, will continue to grow in the coming months. So since January, uh, what uh, since you joined on Babel, um, what surprised you the most in the in this period of time? Because you grew a lot, and you you almost like uh, it's a big increase in the size of the engineering organization. What's the kind of thing that surprised you and was very challenging? So, so there were several things uh, mm -hmm. that are incredibly challenging in this sort of growth and this sort mm -hmm. of company. So for one, uh, we're incredibly transparent internally. Mm -hmm. uh, we focus a lot on people, mm -hmm. on their personal growth, and on the technology as well, mm -hmm. because there are always two sides of the coin. So one is the mm -hmm. uh, personal growth, and the second one is the technical, right? Mm -hmm. And so growing uh, this uh, symbiotic relationship between AI and humans, because mm -hmm. we have a community of 50,000 people mm -hmm. who are bilinguals working with us. Um, what happens is that you have to have an incredible complex pipeline, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, uh, scalable, that is uh, 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 reliable, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And, and so with all these different parts, they all grow at a different rate. Mm -hmm. And you have to make sure that the teams adapt to these uh, scenarios. And at the same time, that your clients don't notice that mm -hmm. you're going through the growing pains. Uh -huh. I think. And, and so it's always this two sides. So one, making sure that the teams follow up with the growth of the business. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the same for the technical side. Mm -hmm. like planning uh, the, the, the architecture, the evolution step by step. Making mm -hmm. sure that we uh, continuously provide value on the two sides. On the human and on the technological side as well. How did that um, affect your architecture and infrastructure um, and, and Babel? Uh, like scaling a product may may um, cause a lot of changes in how you think even about infrastructure. Like how do you do provisioning and all that? Definitely. I mean, um, there's this rule that says that the teams usually grow according, uh, the services usually grow according to the teams. Right? Mm -hmm. If you have two teams, you'll more likely have two services. If you break a team into two, you'll have another two services. Mm -hmm. Because naturally, people will start to tend to think uh, on their own uh, background and on their own uh, uh, um, uh, tools, and, mm -hmm. in, in a sense. So, and that uh, ha is very much tied to the product itself. Right? Mm -hmm. Because at the same time, it's always that engineering side of uh, all the technical people mm -hmm. and want to build more and faster and better and mm -hmm. whatnot. But at the same time, it has to be, we need to make sure that that provides value. Right? We need to make sure that uh, the, 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 uh, the one uh, person that you or, or business that you want to please is the mm -hmm. customer. Mm -hmm. right? But at the same time, you have a group of amazing people that want to learn more, want to evolve mm -hmm. in, in a sense. And so at the same time, they want to learn more, uh, they, they want to get to know more technologies, they mm -hmm. want to be able to take the next step in towards growing the technology, learn with it, right? And making sure that all this fits into the master plan. Mm -hmm. um, and and that, to, that all this brings added value at the end of the day, mm -hmm. right? And so the architecture uh, follows up what, 
with all these factors, right? Uh, not only the breaking uh, of the uh, massive monoliths, mm -hmm. uh, the planning of new services, mm -hmm. uh, the provisioning, uh, the, the sustainability, mm -hmm. and also, of course, the cost of the okay. services. How do you think about like, keeping good, uh, good people joining the company? So, there, as I said, it's very, very much important to us, uh, the human side of things. Um, the respect for people, it, it, it's an amazing topic and it's mm -hmm. very much focused on what we do as a mm -hmm. team mm -hmm. and as a company as a whole. For sure. uh, something that we keep very much in mind is, so the people that we bring, mm -hmm. uh, it needs to make sense to us, but also to them, mm -hmm. right? Uh, when we talk with someone, so our amazing, our pipeline is really amazing. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, roughly two percent acceptance rate uh, in, in the number of people that we hire that mm -hmm. come into the pipeline and that we eventually we can offer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it, it, we and we treat every single person mm -hmm. with uh, the utmost respect. Mm -hmm. And we've had a lot of people applying again and again mm -hmm. uh, because, and we got this feedback several times now that people feel valued. Mm -hmm. on the pipeline. Most people already uh, uh, mentioned several times that in previous opportunities and previous applications to other companies, they feel like a number. Mm -hmm. They feel like uh, a block in the process. Mm -hmm. uh, at Embattle, we make sure that people are uh, treated as such, even if that takes us a bit longer, mm -hmm. but we, it's, it's part of our core values. right? Mm -hmm. And in, in the same sense, we apply the same to the people internally. Mm -hmm. um, everyone knows they have a, a, a Work plan mm -hmm. um, on the personal side and on the technical side again, mm -hmm. um, and that follows up with the needs of the company and the whole architecture, the technologies we use. Mm -hmm. We make sure people have time to learn. Uh, mm -hmm. We provide as much uh, uh, training as, as required mm -hmm. and as people want. Um, and so that all the whole thing, I think it's it's uh, you can't divide it. Actually, mm -hmm. you can't really choose which part to give out to people. Mm -hmm. it, it's a block, it's part of our DNA as well. Can you tell me a little bit about your tech stack? Um, and I uh, imagine sure. that you do a lot of machine learning, so can you yeah. talk tech? Yeah. So we have roughly, uh, uh, we have, uh, we started the company uh, based on Python. Mm -hmm. uh, Python, Django, Flask, mm -hmm. uh, MongoDB, and Postgres. Mm -hmm. And pretty much all the services grew, and, and especially uh, the, the bigger services mm -hmm. grew with this sort of stack. Of course, Redis and the kind of support for asynchronous working. Uh, mm -hmm. We we grew in this sense initially. Then uh, we started to break out these big chunks into smaller ones, smaller mm -hmm. services, mostly with Flask, um, a bit lightweighter compared, mm -hmm. uh, compared to uh, Django and whatnot, um, and. From, and so this also helped the company to evolve not on the AI part but uh, the full stack part because mm -hmm. um, the technologies that we use on the AI side are also uh, based on in, in Python and developed in Python. So it was, this is the fundamentally uh, the fundamental core of the stack. Did you have to change anything about the stack to make sure that now it serves a bigger uh, customer base? Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. So we started out by um, hosting. Uh, a, a lot of our things at Heroku, mm -hmm. that it was just easy, right, mm -hmm. and convenient. Uh, and we eventually, uh, so we, we migrate because we had to start to, to have some special needs mm -hmm. in our core services. Um, and then we moved out and we started to use AWS and DigitalOcean, mm -hmm. right? So we scale a lot of things uh, in these two platforms because then we started to break out our services in very small. Uh, chains and pieces, mm -hmm. and and we grew because most of the services didn't actually require the same uh, load of stress mm -hmm. that um, that the main services were using, and so the throughput was the same. So it would make sense to scale mm -hmm. them all at the same time in the same way, right? And so as we grow, um, there's a, we're we're thinking about the next steps in architecture and structure, mm -hmm. and thinking about uh, especially from a perspective, uh, a performance perspective, and mm -hmm. liability. Uh, maybe some one or two other languages that would fit more because they're uh, fitting the, using the best tool for the, the job at hand, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so using that, uh, some of the things we, we we were using Mongo too as well, mm -hmm. uh, but we started to migrate uh, a lot of things to Postgres mm -hmm. for simplicity and also for performance reasons mm -hmm. um, and also scalability. Right now, uh, most of our uh, infrastructure. Is, is connected to Prometheus, mm -hmm. which reports all the metrics to all the systems, so we know in real time mm -hmm. what's happening. 
we uh, so when we made this presentation about Prometheus a while mm. ago, we called the joy of silence oh, because one of the things that happens when you when you don't have uh, enough. Uh, uh, telemetry on a mm. system is that things break mm. when things break people shout yeah. uh, right <laughs> and so well, by making sure that we're proactive mm. and and making sure that things don't break or mm -hmm. that we are uh, um, notified that things will break we mm. can proactively fix them right? and without waiting for them to break or to have some client report mm. something not that we have a lot but I mean these things happen I uh, think part of a growing culture. We have um, mainly two strategies mm -hmm. uh, for this. So first one is to acknowledge it happened. Right? We, we, we practice a culture of ownership, mm -hmm. uh, not of blame. And so people feel it's okay to say things broke, mm -hmm. it's, it's, things are breaking, mm -hmm. right? And in that sense, it's sort of the end on board from the Toyota way. And in that sense, it's okay for people to say this broke. Mm -hmm. And it's also paramount that we acknowledge that and we need to fix it, right? Mm -hmm. And well, for the fixing part, um, we uh, we can apply the, the methodology of swarm to fix, okay. right? Because some things are an easy fix, mm -hmm. uh, so the team lead will quickly just jump on it and, and fix it right mm -hmm. away, or whoever is in charge of the feature or part of the service, mm -hmm. whatever. If it's a more complex, we eventually, the team lead will, will have a say mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that affects several services, we'd rather, rather have uh, the, the, the the ownerships and the, the, the owners of the services swarm, sit down for mm -hmm. a bit and talk and talk it out and then implement the fix, then to just try to fix something and then eventually they'll end up breaking several yeah. other systems. So, you know, so we, we, we'd rather think 80% of the time and use 20% uh -huh. to fix than actually do the other way around. Yeah. This grew very naturally okay. and, and people just sort of uh, fit into their places mm -hmm. and and most of the people are, are junior, are growing mm -hmm. into uh, uh, more fulfilling uh, positions, more mm -hmm. senior positions. Uh, it's very interesting to see those people now assuming mm -hmm. other roles. Of, uh, I, I didn't join at the beginning of Unbabel, mm -hmm. but I knew Unbabel so, mm -hmm. from, from way back. So I know, I, I know how things progressed mm -hmm. and they were very natural. Mm -hmm. So it's very good to see that um, Jurassic Park quote life finds a way. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. How do you, is that affect your hiring? Do you look for junior engineers to, to uh, grow them? Uh, how, does that affect your, the way you think about expanding the team? Not necessarily mm -hmm. in a sense. Uh, I like the fact, I like the ability to grow people mm -hmm. uh, from within, uh, be them uh, juniors or seniors, because mm -hmm. like we're all still learning. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to make sure that whenever we have a special need, Position mm -hmm. that we fit, uh, we fit with the, the best fit, mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes it requires to hire someone more junior, sometimes mm -hmm. more senior, and sometimes it's just a label. To be honest, mm -hmm. um, I've met people coming out of the university with an amazing attitude, an amazing motivation, and willing to move the world. Mm -hmm. um, and the same thing for senior people, right? Uh, and so sometimes it's not, it's not easy. I, I'd rather when we have a, a, an opening, I'd rather think about what the, what's the type of person I need there, mm -hmm. what are the skills that I need there, and then we'll look for this person, then to just say, I need a junior or a senior, mm -hmm. because labels, labels are labels, mm -hmm. it is what it is, mm -hmm. right? And so I'd, I'd rather, uh, I, I never limit the people that come into mm -hmm. and, and that apply to our positions, even if it, even if they're super junior or super senior, that doesn't matter. Uh, we, we have a, a need, a specific need, and sometimes it may happen that we find someone that's amazing for another position that it's not even open, but there's someone else internally that would like to swap places. And so we promote these scenarios that are also for personal growth. How Hatch affected uh, or helped uh, Unbabble grow and scale? I mean, I, I, I do have a very good notion and it was uh, because we were coming out of Heroku, for instance, mm -hmm. Um, it, it's in this sort of solutions. It's very easy for, especially uh, when you're more focused on product and mm -hmm. building and shipping. It's very easy for you to forget about infrastructure mm -hmm. or uh, architecture because, and at those times, that's the right thing to do, yeah. right? I mean, you shouldn't think about scaling when you have like ten clients. Mm -hmm. right? It doesn't make sense. 
And, and so moving to these sort of solutions. Mm -hmm. So for one, um, I mean, kudos to DigitalOcean because it's one of the best tech blogs mm -hmm. ever, to be honest. Yeah. I know no one <laughs> that has had any question regarding like the infrastructure, operating system that yeah. doesn't go to Google. And the first question is, the first answer is DigitalOcean. So mm -hmm. kudos. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it helps you think on the next step, right? It's not a, a, a it's not a complex thing. It's not. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, it allows you to just boot up the services that you need, and you provision them with whatever mm -hmm. tools you, you have, and then you start building our next step, and mm -hmm. you're able to uh, separate the servers, mm -hmm. the, the services into mm -hmm. different servers or the same or wherever. Mm -hmm. But you have a hand on pretty much ever the whole process, mm -hmm. and in a very simple and fast way as well. Thank you so much for, Thank you. for spending some time. Likewise. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.